Hi Dr. C N Manjunath welcome to the Hindu you have been with Jaydeva for so many years and after an illustrious career of 35 years you would be retiring this month ha huh, so what are your feelings yeah see after uh, successfully completing my dm cardiology i joined this institution in 1989 as a lecturer in cardiology uh, with lot of uh, dream with lot of uh, vision uh, that we should be able to provide a, a quality care cardiac care to cross section of the society at an affordable cost at the same time uh, because at that time cardiology was uh, quite primitive it was mainly diagnostic there was no angioplasty there was no stent there was no uh, balloon valvoplasty so that was our dream that we should be able to develop all these programs in this public hospital so that a common man is benefited so with that uh, lot of uh, hope uh, we joined that institution today uh, that is uh, completely fulfilled so we could able to turn around this uh, hospital i can always say uh, we have brought a metamorphotic changes uh, in a public hospital to an extent and uh, many people uh, are really shocked to see that it is a government hospital dr vivas would like to hear from you on what are the contributing factors to the rise in the incidence of heart attack among uh, the young uh, your own studies at jaydeva have shown that 40% of those young heart attack patients are those who do not have any conventional risk factors so what would be the contributing factors for this yeah, actually in the last uh, 15 years if you look at the prevalence of heart attack uh, what do you call premature heart attack heart attack in the young has gone up by 22% and uh, yes so the conventional risk factors are always there in about 70% of these young heart attack patients less such as smoking diabetes hypertension dyslipidemia and i wanted to stress upon family history if somebody in the family has already suffered from an heart attack uh, or heart diseases uh, b- b- i mean uh, before 50 years of age below 50 years of age such family members are more vulnerable to heart mm-hmm. attack that is one and uh, yes uh, physical inactivity food habits have changed food products have changed and stress levels are phenomenally high mm. among the youngsters and they are trying to do too many things in a too short time they want to achieve a lot of things in a very short time their ambitions levels are very high and uh, sometimes uh, in bigger cities uh, even drug abuse is also an issue particularly marijuana cocaine yeah. and ganja all those things and uh, we are searching for some new factors new risk factors because as you said 30% do not have conventional risk factors no diabetes mm-hmm. no hypertension no smoking but still they land up with a heart attack so here comes some of the uh, newer uh, risk factors such as air pollution mm-hmm. is considered to be a new tobacco and stress is also considered to be a new tobacco or a new smoking uh, then uh, polycystic ovary disease in women thyroid disorders rheumatoid arthritis mm. and fatty liver okay. and fatty liver uh, this thing and uh, and 1 in 250 in general population have got what is called familial hypercholesterolemia mm. that, that means they have cholesterol levels being high from birth itself due okay. to metabolic uh, defect like congenital yeah congenital mm-hmm. so these are some of the uh, risk factors uh, for heart attack in the young certainly lifestyle is playing a very important role the changed lifestyle mm. and uh, changed food habits and uh, the stress levels so these are the real contributing factors apart from conventional risk factors doctor we hear a lot about people collapsing in the gym after exercise so how much of exercise is good and how much is advisable see the exercise mm. is an integral part of health promotion there's no question about it exercise mm. is a must Uh, whether it is walking swimming cycling or even going to the gyms but only issue is uh, everything should be done in moderation moderation is the key word mm. uh, moderate intensity exercise even in the gym that's fine uh, for example if somebody is capable of lifting only 30 kg if he tries to lift 60 kg then they will have it will have an adverse impact mm. on the heart mm. on the blood vessels or this thing and uh, before and this exercise program has to go in a step by step manner it has to be in a phased manner there has to be warming up period 
for a couple of weeks there has to be a warming up period of low intensity exercise then you have to up, upscale it to mm. moderate intensity and those who are taking up high intensity exercises uh, my advice is they should undergo a cardiac uh, checkup including ecg echo and uh, treadmill test and of course some blood test because many of them even many in the general population have a hidden cardiac problem that is not known so sometimes it is linked to that certainly moderation is the keyword and uh, regarding their diet is also important see unnecessarily it should not consume this aerated drinks mm. and uh, too much of energy drinks i think energy comes from great natural food also sprouts they can have egg mm. and they can have fruits vegetables and they should hydrate well and uh, acclimatization to an exercise program is very very important mm. so certainly uh, it's walking i mean exercise is very important uh, particularly at least one should walk 45 minutes to 50 minutes a day their life span increases by 10 years okay. it's a very documented scientific data heart diseases were known to be largely affecting men in the past but now women are also more more number of women are also reporting with heart diseases why is this doctor uh, that's correct because uh, heart attack and heart attack related disease is primarily mainly disease of men uh, but off late what is happening even today uh, if you take 100 men versus 100 women in the icu uh, there are more men than women but mm -hmm. when you take women to men comparison from last 30 years to now mm -hmm. there is increase in the prevalence of heart attack among women even young women mm -hmm. in our study of young heart attack uh, group Uh, there were 8% were women i mean uh, they are as young as 25 years mm. 29 years all professionals from labor class to engineers mm. doctors administrative group and all so the stress levels because yes it was thought that hormones uh, in women gives protection against heart diseases that effect is fading away okay. because uh, today in this modern uh, days Uh, men i mean women also funk, work like men there is one and also some of them go i mean attain very premature menopause that is second and diabetes and hypertension mm. is becoming more among women stress levels are very high i think uh, the stress levels in women for a given problem is uh, three times more than men and uh, children education has become mothers examination children education has become mothers examination and uh, they have to take a, uh, they have to take care of ch children they have to take care of husband family and place uh, work uh, i mean whatever work they are doing so these things and even uh, rheumatoid arthritis which is relatively common in women compared to men mm. that there's also a risk factor sometimes pregnancy can also sometimes uh, can trigger some of these cardiac events mm -hmm. so in nutshell yes the prevalence of heart disease is steadily increasing among women but compared to men it is still less but uh, women to men comparison from last 30 years to now certainly it is increasing and uh, because of these factors diabetes hypertension sometimes contraceptive hormones they take there's a stress level i think stress uh, is really yeah. an important uh, risk factor is late presentation a factor doctor because the men usually report late that's what you have been telling uh, at several occasions so. given cardiac problem uh, late presentation is more common in women than in men mm. and symptoms are a bit atypical uh, when they develop a, an acute cardiac problem symptoms are quite typical uh, chest pain or burning sensation in the chest or they will have uh, sort of a heaviness in the chest or in the uh, pain in the jaw or throat these are common in men but women when they develop heart attack uh, their symptoms are little atypical and vague and they ignore always they ignore their symptoms and they present to the hospital little later than men that is the reason and also the caliber of the arteries are relatively smaller in women hmm. than in men so for any given uh, cardiac issue particularly coronary artery disease or heart attack related problem uh, the whether it is uh, the, whether they undergo angioplasty stent or whether they undergo bypass surgery uh, the mortality and morbidity is relatively more in women than in men doctor what are the warning signs of a heart attack and uh, most of the times uh, people get confused to it to be gastritis so 
how do you differentiate between a heart attack and a gastritis problem yeah see what happens uh, always uh, when there is a blockage of more than 70% in any one of the arteries because we have three coronary arteries mm. which carry oxygen and the blood supply to the heart muscle if the blockage is more than 70% then they start developing symptoms on walking mm. climbing so always a cardiac or an ischemic pain increases on walking increases on climbing okay. or increases on doing work so not necessarily it could be pain so for some people it can be like a burning sensation in the chest for example we have uh, two sets of uh, uh, people see one group says i am having pain in the left hand left shoulder or in the left side of the chest at rest while walking i am absolutely comfortable then mm. it is not from the heart the other way around uh, at rest they are comfortable moment they start walking and climbing okay. or after taking heavy meal walking up hill if the chest pain or the burning sensation increases then it is cardiac because heart is a, a dynamic structure yeah. so as you put more stress on the heart the pain increases so that is the important symptom mm. and uh, heart attack symptoms on the day of heart attack uh, of course uh, everybody knows heart is on the left side of the chest they get severe pain in the chest burning sensation in the chest this is where when they get burning sensation in the mid portion of the chest or in the upper stomach region they always confuse it for gastritis hmm. so sometimes heart attack can be confused for gastritis so when somebody with some risk factors like smoking diabetes hypertension family history if they get some stomach region pain or uh, in the mid portion of the chest if they get they should always get checked they should get an ecg and uh, nowadays we do one blood test called troponin mm. so they always rule out an acute uh, cardiac uh, problem particularly acute heart attack uh, this thing so these are sometimes uh, some atypical presentation of heart attack we have seen when they develop heart attack they may not get any pain in the left side of the chest they get pain in the jaw they get pain in the throat okay. or they can get pain in the upper uh, back along with sweating and tiredness and f some uh, apprehension and fear of death or breathing difficulties mm -hmm. so these are some of the uh, symptoms of uh, heart attack thank you doctor thank you for this insightful information we from the hindu wish you a fruitful second innings thank you very thank much thank you thank you wish you all the same yes for more such information and stories do follow the hindu